All right, this is the third and final lesson on logarithms, and we're going to go through some more examples of exam type questions. All right, first up, we're going to solve an equation uh, log to the base 4 of x plus 3 minus log to the base 4 of x equals 3. Um, now, the first thing we need to do is use the division subtraction rule because we can combine the two logarithms into the logarithm of x plus 3 over x, and that equals 3. Um, now, if we look at this, the base of the logarithm is 4. The logarithm itself equals 3. And remember, logarithm is a power. So think of the relationship. If you have the base 4 to the power 3, that's what the thing inside the brackets is equal to. Okay, you'll get used to doing this. Um, so that's the way we move forward with the equation. Um, so multiply by x and turn 4 cubed into 64. So 64x is x plus 3. Subtract the x. 63x equals 3, and then finally divide by 63, and simplify. Okay, next up, again we're solving a log-based equation. Um, here we need to do something before we can combine these two logarithms, we have to get rid of that 2 in front using the power rule. So we can bring the 2 inside the logarithm as a power, so it becomes log of x squared minus log of 7x equals 1. Then we can use the division rule to join them together, log of x squared over 7x is equal to 1, and again, once we've just simplified what's in the bracket here by cancelling the x, we're going to consider the exponential version of this logarithm. So the base is 3, the power is 1, so x over 7 is equal to 3 to the power 1. Now, which of course is just 3, and all we're left to do is to multiply it by 7, and we're left with x equals 21. Okay, number 3. Um, slightly different. We're given this fact log to the base 2 of y is 15, and we need to find out log to the base 2 of 8y. So we start with writing down the thing that we want, and we need to try and make it look like the thing that we've got. So we use the multiplication rule to split it up into two logarithms. And you can see already the part on the right we know is going to be 15. Now the part on the left, log to the base 2 of 8, we'll consider what power of 2 equals 8, and that is 2 cubed. So a bit like in the previous lesson, we can write that as log to the base 2 of 2 cubed. And we can use the power law to bring the 3 out to the front. And once we've done that, we can recognize that log to the base 2 of 2 is simply 1, and log to the base 2 of y is 15, from what we're given in the question. So the whole thing, uh, log to the base 2 of 8y, is simply equal to 3 plus 15, which is, of course, 18. And that is our answer. OK, next one, we're solving another equation, but this one looks different. It's uh, an exponential equation, OK? So x is part of the power. And the trick here, um, well, it's recognizing that uh, 5 to the power 2x is the same thing as 5 to the x squared. Okay, so we've got 5 to the x squared and 5 to the x appearing in this. So it's like a quadratic, but where 5 to the x is the variable. So if we write it like that, um, we can see that actually we can factorize it. 5 to the x can be taken out as a factor of both terms. And inside the bracket, we have 5 to the x minus 6 equals 0. So one of these two things must be 0. Either 5 to the power x equals 0. Um, but we're going to reject that because there's no power that x could be to make 5 to the power x 0. Or um, 5 to the x must equal 6. So that's the only possible solution. 5 to the power x equals 6. And this is like the equ um, equations which we did in the last lesson. We take logs of both sides log of 5 to the x is log of 6. Use the power law to bring the x out to the front. x log 5 equals log 6. And you'll recall that we just need to divide by log 5 now. So we end up with log 6 divided by log 5. And we're using base 10, but actually it doesn't matter, as long as you're consistent. And check that you can get the same answer, 1.11. OK, final question, and this one is really important because you've probably already studied geometric series, but you won't be able to do this type of question because you hadn't done logarithms. So we have a situation where a car was purchased for £18,000, and 
each subsequent year it is worth 80% of what it was before. So it loses 20% of its value each year. Okay, now part A is not particularly tricky. We need to show that the value of the car exactly three years after it was purchased is that. So to work out the value, we start with 18,000. Each time we decrease it by 20%, we end up with 80%. So we multiply by 0 0.8, and we need to do that three times, so 0 0.8 cubed. And that's all there is to it for part A. Uh, you just stick that in your calculator, and we get exactly what we we're after, £9,216. Now for part B, um, we require uh, something a little bit more tricky. We're told that the value of the car falls below £1,000 for the first time n years after it's purchased. Now the way I tend to approach these is to translate this into mathematics. Okay? If I write the sentence, the value n year after n years is less than £1,000, let's take each part of that and write it down mathematically. So the value after n years is 18,000 times 0 0.8 to the power n. And then if I want to say that is less than 1,000 pounds, I simply use an inequality sign, less than 1,000. And I'm set up now to find my answer. That's the hard part done, really. I have to solve. Um, the only trick remaining is to use logarithms, and we'll see how that comes in now. So uh, just like an equation, you need to isolate n. So we divide by 18,000, we get 1,000 over 18,000, um, and of course that cancels down uh, to 1 over 18. Now, if this were an equation, you'd take logs, so that's what we'll do. You can still take logs of both sides of an inequality. So log of 0 0.8 to the power n is less than log of 1 18th. And again, we can use the power rule to bring the n out to the front. So we end up with n log 0.8 is less than log of 1 18th. Now the next step with an equation would be to divide by log of 0.8. And again, that's exactly what we do, but we do so very carefully um, because this is an inequality. Now, if I do that, and let's see what happens, I get log of 1 over 18 divided by log of 0.8. But there's a problem here, the inequality sign. Now, you won't realize it necessarily, or it might be obvious, but log of 0.8, um, well, if you just tap it into your calculator, you can confirm this. Log of 0.8 is a negative number. It works out as minus 0.09. .00. And you should know by now that when you divide by a negative number, you have to flip the inequality sign round. So that's the point here, that's the trick, you have to make sure you flip the inequality sign round if you're dividing by a negative. Anyway, stick that in the calculator, we now have n is greater than 12.952 dot 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 dot. n is the number of years, okay, and we're talking about a change every whole number of years, so the value of n that we want is the smallest whole number that fits, 13. That's your answer. See you later.